Tim Spector's Zoe Health is the UK's fastest growing health tech by headcount. Backed by Dragon Zen entrepreneur and Diary of a CEO podcast host Stephen Bartlett, Zoe claims to be shaping the future of healthcare. But is this COVID symptom tracker app now turned personalized nutrition protocol actually legit or just another money grab preying on those looking for a new shiny object? I've read every article and review that I could find on Zoe Health and combined that with the latest scientific consensus to give you the pros, cons, and practical applications of Zoe Health. So let's dig in. If you're new around here, my name is Adam McDonald. I'm a registered performance nutritionist, currently pursuing my doctorate in human performance, a competitive natural bodybuilder, and a health and fitness coach. In this channel, we turn complex nutrition and health science into practical application. Zoe or Zoe Health claims that their journey began 25 years ago when Tim Spector began comparing the genetic differences in sets of twins. But it wasn't until many years later when in 2018 that Zoe launched its gut testing and diet tracking app. In response to the pandemic, the company then quickly switched gears in 2020 to build a government funded COVID symptom tracker app. When the funding dried up a few years later, Zoe reverted back to its original idea that it continues to be sold today. So what exactly is Zoe Health and what do you get? In essence, it's all centered around a supposed personalized precision nutrition protocol, which according to Zoe is a combination of the latest nutritional science and cutting edge machine learning. Zoe is based the core of its business around one particular scientific trial called PREDICT. Long story short, PREDICT 1 was the first of a series of trials which measured participants' biological responses to certain meals over a two week period. They visited the lab, they had various tests taken in response to these meals, and then for the following two weeks, they were sent home with a list of meals, including carefully crafted muffins. They were instructed to take finger prick blood tests after specific meals for the first five days, provide a stool sample, and wear a continuous glucose monitor for 14 days, all while tracking their food in the Zoe app. This eventually developed into what you, the consumer, can buy today. When you sign up for Zoe, you'll receive a test kit that contains two breakfast and two two lunch cookies, both of which are pretty similar, one being higher in saturated fats, a stool test, or as Zoe calls it, a poop test, a finger prick test, and a continuous glucose monitor. On the first day, you'll take the stool test, eat the cookies, and take your blood from your finger whilst logging all of your food in the Zoe app. For the next two weeks, you'll continue to log your food in the app and wear the continuous glucose monitor, at which point then you will discard the glucose monitor. A few weeks later, you'll receive your report and your scores out of 100 for your blood sugar, your blood fat, and your gut health. Now, Zoe have not shared exactly how they score these, but according to you, Users, they compare your results to other users in their database and they base that off the results in the PREDICT trial. For example, if you have a gut microbiota composition closer to those who are classified as unhealthy, you will get a lower score and vice versa. For your blood fat, they look at your postprandial triglycerides, your HDL, and your non-HDL cholesterol. And finally, for blood sugar, they look at your blood glucose response in relation to certain meals that you consume. They will use their in-house developed algorithm to give you specific meals through their app, which they claim are based on your specific biology. You also have have in-app chat support with a nutritionist who can help explain your results further. And you can get all of this for a one-off fee of around 300 pounds combined with a necessary subscription to their app, which costs as low as 25 pounds per month. Now, as someone who's interested in personalized experience, technology, and science, this all sounds fantastic to me. Having worked in Microsoft and Amazon web services for many years, I'm excited about the advancements in machine learning and AI. In fact, if I didn't know a whole lot about nutrition, I'd already be a customer of Zoe. But when I first came across this, I knew that there was something that wasn't quite right right because precision nutrition isn't new after all this isn't a development that just come on the scene so let's start with the positives according to zoe's website although the service is not primarily focused on fat loss unpublished zoe data shows that on average users lose about 9.4 pounds over a three month period it's clear that the app promotes increased consumption of vegetables and a reduction in ultra processed calorie dense foods we have tons of research to show how increased plant and fiber consumption has a whole host of health benefits and is associated with lower body weight and all cause mortality the app can contains healthy recipes and promotes home cooking, which is linked with lower body fat and weight compared to less home cooking. It also doesn't completely cut out certain food groups, which is essential for long-term adherence and enjoyment. There's also in-app support to help you along the way to some extent. And finally, it gamifies the process by giving you points, making it more fun. It's questionable whether extrinsic rewards such as ranking or accolades actually lead to long-term change. Self-determination theory would suggest no, but in this specific case, it remains to be seen. Taking all of the above together, I think these are really strong positives. Anything that can get people to consume more plants and be more mindful about what they eat is going to have profound impacts on their health, particularly if they're coming from a poor starting place. After all, according to the National Diet and Nutrition Survey, in the UK, only about one quarter of adults reach the recommended five servings of fruit and vegetables per day. But that is where the benefits end and the overcomplications begin. You see, the unique selling point of Zoe is not that they will provide healthy recipes and get you eating better, but rather that they will take your very specific biological data and create a personalized precision plan that's going to be better than general advice, when in reality, it's not. I previously talked about 
continuous glucose monitors on this channel before, but it's worth a recap. Diabetics are individuals who have a pancreas that doesn't function properly. For otherwise healthy people like myself, our pancreas will release glucagon or insulin when your blood sugar gets too low or too high respectively. So we don't need to worry about when our blood sugar goes up or when it goes down within the normal range. For diabetics, however, their pancreas doesn't effectively release these two hormones. So they constantly need to be monitoring their blood glucose to avoid serious issues. Type two diabetes is a metabolic condition and is impacted by lifestyle choices. So people often make logical leaps and assume that any increase in blood sugar is bad or to be avoided. That if we were to start to see our blood sugar go up, perhaps it's the first sign of bigger problems. When in reality, this is just a normal physiological response to eating carbohydrates. Diabetes isn't a problem necessarily created by sugar consumption, but rather when a person reaches their individual limit for fat storage under the skin, fat cells become inflamed, dysfunctional and resistant to signals of insulin, causing the pancreas to go into overdrive, which then in turn impacts blood glucose regulation over time. You could argue that perhaps continuous glucose monitors would at least show initial warning signs for people who may have problems. But according to consultant, physician and diabetes researcher, Dr. Shivani Misra, we shouldn't be using CGMs to diagnose diabetes. It's absolutely not validated for that. In this video review I found by YouTuber Katie Snooks, it's clear that the app scores certain foods primarily, if not exclusively, under the glycemic index. In other words, how they would impact your blood sugar in a fasted state. Katie goes on to say that passion fruit, blackberries and avocado all score well for her, coincidentally all having a low GI, and that she should avoid raisins, dates and watermelon because they all score low for her. Lo and behold, all of those three have a higher glycemic index. Like seriously, watermelon is one of the least calorie dense foods you consume. Imagine telling someone who's young and healthy that they should avoid it or limit it, putting it in the same category as donuts. In light of everything that I have said here, it is important to note that many factors can influence an individual's blood glucose response, from sleep to stress and even exercise. And according to the PREDICT trial, a person's individual response to a meal only accounted for about 7.5% in the variance in different blood glucose responses. Therefore, it's impossible to say with great specificity that one type of food works for you and your body and another doesn't, at least when it comes to blood glucose control. We also see that the difference in gut microbiota also only accounted for a similarly small percentage in a person's post meal response. But Zoe would have known this already, right? Since they're basing all of their surface off this exact trial. It seems a little misleading in the podcasts and articles that they put out when they overemphasize the importance of these inter individual variants and how much we can specifically target it by eating in a very specific way. Interestingly, in this paper, well known nutrition researcher Kevin Hall and colleagues looked at different results of CGMs in people without diabetes, i.e., Zoe's target market. What they found was that quite often, the two different brands of CGMs provided very different results for the same person eating the exact same meal. They also found that the same person eating the same meal at the same time, one week later, produced very different readings, meaning it's very difficult to separate the signal from the noise. I'd personally be extremely surprised if the foods recommended for different people in the Zoe app were not almost identical for every user. The blood tests which look at your triglycerides and cholesterol in your blood are potentially helpful to see if you do indeed have high levels of LDL, but it's not necessarily going to change recommendations all that much. Healthy eating guidelines do recommend that we lower a saturated fat intake and increase plant consumption irrespective of your LDL status. Now, if Zoe did identify that you had levels that required medical intervention, I'm hoping they would notify you, but I'm not entirely sure. If you want to learn more about how diet impacts your blood lipids and cardiovascular disease risk, I highly recommend checking out this article series by Dr. Alan Flanagan and Danny Lennon. I'll leave the link in the description. Now, the gut testing is complete crap, pun intended. It's not that we cannot identify the bacteria that you have in your gut, but rather we still know so little about how very specific changes in individual gut microbiomes impact our health. Basically, what the British study tells us what we already know. A diet rich in a diversity of plants is associated with increased gut microbiome diversity and good health, but it doesn't give us the level of detail such as John Smith needs to eat more green apples but avoid cabbage because it's making his health worse. In fact, it's a little ironic that in her YouTube review, Katie mentions that she has long had IBS-like symptoms, yet Zoe Health didn't account for this and constantly recommended that she ate chickpeas, which in her words, ruined her stomach. This is what happens when you prioritize mechanisms over human outcomes. What kind of personalized nutrition protocol doesn't account for food intolerances? The whole point of Zoe Health and its precise algorithms and tests is that it's supposed to be superior to general advice or guidance. The reality is the enthusiasm for personalized nutrition far outweighs what we currently know about it. In its current form, these testing protocols and specific recommendations are nothing more than just hype and over extrapolation. I absolutely do think that personalization in nutrition is important, taking into account someone's lifestyle, their goals, personal preferences, amongst other things, but we are not at the point where picking certain foods based on biomarkers outside of what's 
currently recommended in non-specific health cases makes any sense. The vast majority of people eat too much saturated fat, too much sodium and sugar, too little fiber, fruits and vegetables, and way too many calories. Even if these tests were extremely accurate and you knew your body preferred peanuts over almonds, would this solve the problem of people actually taking action on what they know is good for them? I personally don't think so. Now, Zoe are in the middle of publishing a study called the Zoe Method, where they compare Zoe to a control group who get access to email support from a nutritionist, amongst other nutritional information. They've said that the unpublished findings show that Zoe works better than traditional methods and are using this in their marketing. However, we have very little data to work with right now, and in my opinion, it's hard to give 100% trust to a company that's profiting off this unpublished data, as we don't know the differences in the support between these two groups. Could it be the specific tests and food recommendations made by Zoe that's getting them better results? Maybe. Or could it be the simple access in an app to recipes, meal options, and a food tracking system, perhaps? On their website, Zoe State Research has shown that personalized plans can be more effective in managing blood sugar responses in people who are at risk of developing diabetes. But within the research, Zoe themselves share under its exact article, the scientific research states, studies using personalized nutrition approaches to examine genetic, metabolomic, and microbiome variations have not yet identified specific factors consistently improve outcomes in type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or pre-diabetes. I have no doubt that many people have and will continue to get benefits from using Zoe, and I think there's elements of this program that when taken on a whole are beneficial. I also think that at some point in the future, we'll be at a point where we can get more in-depth recommendations for our health based on technology. But as for now, the chances are that the results are coming from the basic tried and tested methods that we've known for a very long time. And if you found this video insightful, check out this other video I made specifically on continuous glucose monitors.